Hi guys, welcome back to Clocker Dandy Noodles here for on time this time. I promised it would be on time this time. Vanitas coming out. This is episode seven. This time I am busy tomorrow, so it wouldn't have been able to come out tomorrow. But we're on time, ready for another review. Uh, I'm going to discuss a few little pieces that I thought were interesting, a few things that came to mind. Go off track a little bit too, if you'll allow me to, and have some general fun. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. There is also currently my midway review that has finally gone up. In this video, I tell you my top three EDs, top three OPs, and current standing of one of my top three anime of the season so far. I think it's going to change drastically because there's a lot going on and it was very difficult to pull that list together. Compared to last season, it's easier to do just because there's not as much going on. But I can just tell you guys right now, next season is looking mighty big. It's a big storm on the horizon and this channel is not going to cope very well. If you want notifications sent straight to your phone, another good way of following the channel is by Joining the Discord group, there's not a lot going on there generally, but you do get a notification to your phone, to your device, whenever a video is launched, so you can keep track of all the bits going on, and with new things coming on the horizon, it means you don't get to miss out, and that's also where I will tell you guys if there is a delay. So let's get going. This is an episode I wasn't quite expecting. We had a very heavy-paced, fast-paced episode last week, and it's been pretty fast-paced until this point, so this week's episode acts like a bit of a breaker it's important we do cover a lot of information but compared to the pacing so far it is a right slow down going back to gear number one just to chill and i think we need it especially when we had a lot go on so what is love i do also really like the way that we open quite vaguely and it's the build up the slow build up of the two holding hands and doing that dance and not a lot of information is given to you at this point and then that question is asked it's actually quite a nice way of just going hey surprise this is this is today's topic and i guess it's because noe's upbringing he's had quite the odd upbringing we discussed it more last week so you can check out that video but with the way that he has grown up he's not really had a lot of time to really understand the concept of love and what love really means he has had love though in different forms like the friendship love and there is this thing with Domi going on which he must know that there's something there but we'll talk about that a little bit later on because there's a, a lot of hinting on this today so today's episode really is a relationship episode about how different characters interact and we get to build with them so it's a nice building episode and perhaps too guys Noe's true love tart tatan of course I and mean, there are people out there who are massive foodies and to them food is love food is life and i i do love a good dish i love a good meal it's great i do enjoy talking about food if you know me or if you've been on the channel long enough you might know that a big thing with me is i do like talking about food if you liked my moriarty the patriot videos a lot of the time i would take a pit stop to talk about food it's one of the things i think as well if you also like food anime you might like one of the animes i'm breaking down next season and me saying that if you're already aware of what's coming you definitely know what anime i'm talking about so tartatan is a dish that is technically caramelized fruit it's a pastry it's technically a pastry but it's got caramelized fruit on top so obviously it's sprinkled with the sugar and it just caramelizes in the oven it is traditionally served with apples however the fun thing is that any fruit can be used and it still counts as the same name so it doesn't change name if you're using plums which i have seen the use caramelized plums on top and sometimes as well caramelized strawberries which is a bit of an interesting one it did traditionally come from france but it has since spread out and many people have twisted upon it there's more modern takes some people have done fusions with it really nice food actually it's a really good thing it can be a little sweet though because obviously it's got that sugar on top of it which starts to crystallize a little bit as the saying goes food is love food is life and there are people out there who to them that is what love is a good meal I also like how proud and smug Domi is in this scene because she knows she's hit the jackpot. She knew that this was the big love of Noe and obviously she's trying to win his heart by food and the way to anybody's heart is by good food. However, Vanitas is not feeling the love this time round and I like the fact that this is put in because it shows Noe and Vanitas as being opposites to one another. So one loves the sweets and it goes gaga for it and the other one is a bit you know, he's not too fond of sugar and I like the way that he kind of tongues it to see if it's safe. And then this is kind of like, nope, nope, definitely not eating this thing. And then Vanitas gifting his section to Noe and continuing that love and seeing how love struck 
Uh, no, I is at this point because he's in love with his tart. That is probably what love really is. I think this is probably the moment that answers that question. What is love? Now, another thing I really like this week is going to be the Vanitas faces. He is growing on me a little bit. He wasn't off the bat my favourite. No way too growing on me. I don't think I had any immediate favourites when watching the anime, but they're starting to grow on me. And this might have been the episode that allowed Vanitas to grow on me. Was the face reactions. I absolutely adored this. So we have the Vanitas smug face. Probably so far one of my favourite screenshots of the series. I wanted to use it as my thumbnail but then a better picture came up at the end and I was like oh damn it there's too many good pictures of his face this week as well the trolling of poor Luca is such a great look of dynamic going on just Vanitas trolling Vanitas playing the troll and the my bad that's one of my lines I have a habit of going oops my bad a lot so Vanitas are you calling me a troll or oh, does this make me a troll so, Vanitas and John, let's discuss it because last week we saw that magnificent bite that left a few question marks in the air. It seems to have left a proper mark, the mark of the vampire, which is an interesting thing because, again, that does play into folklore. A lot of people saying that the vampire will leave a mark upon the victim. It's interesting. It does make me wonder if this is how vampires bond or this is how vampires share love, in a sense, because it does seem to be a very intimate thing with them. But it's interesting as well that this is her mark. Her mark is a red rose. And red roses do generally mean passionate love, true love. Obviously, all roses have a symbology. But the red rose is always true love. And that also led me down the roots of thinking, does every single vampire have a mark? All the vampires marks the same they're all roses of some sorts it's interesting interesting thing i like us to maybe develop more into to see if that's a thing obviously we know that he was bit out of necessity but he really is the king of faces this week because this as well is another front runner i like this face still not a hundred percent about the standings of this dynamic it seems that vanitas does love the hellfire witch the hellfire witch is probably never going to love him but that's what makes him love her even more we'll get into that a little bit later on because he does describe it a bit more i also wasn't expecting noe to go out the window after them that's something i don't know why i wasn't expecting i just didn't expect him to get up and go and chase after them but it really is just a week that seems to be focusing on character interactions and it allows us to do some building as well building of character growth as opposed to the last few weeks where we've had a lot of action based allowing the comedy to shine through and there's a lot of comedy going on it's a funny anime at times. There's a lot of hidden funny moments. Nice just change, a nice come down on the pacing. It is a moment that we can take time to stop and actually enjoy the view that's going on. Vanitas and the Hellfire Witch being bonded by a secret and now this bite mark as well. So we are really are starting to build up this relationship. This is a very odd relationship. It's an interesting relationship at the most. I did initially think that Vanitas was trolling. I think that's part of the thing as well. He really does enjoy trolling. But sometimes they do say people who are trolling are sometimes showing them probably most inner feelings or they're hiding something. They're trolling because they're trying to hide the fact that he probably does actually really like her. So he's trying to make a joke out of it when it's actually the truth. Love the fact as well that Vanitas goes into this big science spiel and it really gave me Senku vibes from Dr. Stone. This week, oddly enough, I don't know why, Vanitas has really given me Senku vibes. I like it. I love Senku. I think Senku is a fantastic character, but I don't know why Vanitas has given me those vibes. It's strange. It's not even the same voice actor, but it is a great call. I love that he goes into the full science behind it, and it is something that I have heard quite a few times. A lot of games play on it as well. The aphrodisiac that is the vampiric kiss or the vampiric bite the vampire's kiss is the bite but this is where i really couldn't tell if vanitas was playing around or not is there really something to it does he actually love her or was the aphrodisiac a big helping nudge in the fact that what he's saying right now he just really enjoys that feeling but she does in the end call him by his name so it really does feel like a bit of a win for vanitas at that point this is when Noe decides he wants to pull a fast one on me and perhaps Domi as well. And we both had the same reaction when he started saying that he had the feeling in his chest. And Domi starts to panic because she's like, wait, 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 this is love, right? You're describing love. Me and her both reacted to that build up in the same manner. I was maybe expecting him to say I was jealous or maybe even oddly go down the I love him route, which I don't think he did because he doesn't understand what love is, which also wouldn't have fit. But I don't know if I really was expecting where he was going. Vanitas apparently is a walking pheromone machine and he really has got it going on because apparently he smells so good. 
think I understand. I think I vaguely understand. Some people just smell really good. It's a really hard one for me because I don't really interact with people enough. <laughs> I, I don't like people, guys. I hide up on my on my own. But there are some people who just generally smell good. But Noake is the opposite, perhaps, of Vanitas this week. Even though Vanitas does say he doesn't really understand love, Vanitas seems to be making more headway in that topic than Noay, who is really oblivious to the way that Domi actually feels, despite the fact that he is able to read blood. So we were given that, that he can read people's feelings via blood. Or maybe the fact that he's just kind of brushing over it because he just doesn't know enough about it. Very, very interesting. This is a relationship, too, that we are new to. We're, having, we're slowly starting to develop and explore. However, poor, poor Luca gets left out. I feel like Luca is going to come back, however, and play an important role because we are starting to drop little tiny hints when it comes to Luca. But we are treated to a fantastic cool dance sequence, which is very, very beautiful. Seeing the girls dancing with the girls and the boys dancing with the boys. I like it. A nice bit of a shake up going on there. And that's when, of course, we go full circle. We come back on the opening scene. So we essentially started halfway through the episode this week, which is quite fun. What is love? And I like the discussion that goes on between the two. I like the fact that it's just kind of something that you can't really put in words. Vanitas does apparently love the Hellfire Witch. Love is like catching a cold. I think that makes it a simile. It's like catching a cold. You just pick it up one day. Next minute, you're sick. You don't know sometimes where it comes from. It's just you're there. You have it. Don't know if I really was expecting it. Danatel says that he really does love her because she won't ever love him back. So that is the thing. Some people out there really do like the chase. I've, I've had experiences of people around me, uh, me personally as well. Just as soon as the chase is over and you surrender, that is obviously sometimes when they just kind of back off and they, the interest isn't there anymore. It's not thrilling. It's not fun. Vanitas doesn't want a girl who will live, love him unconditionally, in a sense. He doesn't want that. And I think the moment that somebody starts to love him would be the moment that Vanitas would back off. So very, very sad to anybody who stands him in, out there, all the Vanitas simps. A bit, bit rough there for you guys because I don't think he appreciates it or I don't think he would be the kind of character who would commit. But let's talk about a character who really has got my attention because I said it last week as well. The hero, the peacemaker, oddly enough, Lord Rufian. Also, again, that hint, what is Luca hiding? Domi tells Noe, you don't quite know much about him either. And it feels like he has to tell you. So there's something going on with Luca. What is Luca hiding? Because it's in the blood. It's Lord Rufium is the uncle. What is he hiding? So next week's episode, I'm gearing up for to be quite interesting as well. The ending itself is pretty ominous. So we've got like a red ominous bed. We also see Lord Rufium overlooking everything. And he's behind a window. And you know me, it's been a while, guys, since I've done a bit of symbology because nothing really feels like it needs it this, this season. And the symbology would say at this point that with there being a window with him dividing him from the world outside, either he's feeling trapped or there is a literal divide between him and the world. With apparently him being quite high in standings, we also see this shown with the fact that he's up and he's looking down which hints at his high status anyway, it would feel that maybe he feels apart from everyone. Maybe he feels lonely at the top. He's divided from everybody else around him. But he is looking out. So he does have this desire or an interest in what is going on around him. He is a character that I really feel drawn to. I don't know why. And I'm really excited to learn more about him. But he's a character I want to know more. And he seems intriguing to me. So I am drawn to learn more about Lord Rufian. Because obviously... He's up there with people like Veronica. And obviously Veronica's a character who's terrifying, but it's very, very powerful. Another character I'd like to know a bit more about and what her whole deal is. It's another fun episode. I think this week's episode was much needed after the hype that we've had. We've had quite a steep build until this point. This is like our breather before we dive back into the world and the madness and chaos story that is slowly unfolding i feel like this week's episode is just there to start establishing the bonds with the characters on screen trying to establish the main characters as well we've got these main names coming up so we're seeing these guys all interact which is fun because they all sit in the same room we have all five of them at the table as well some interesting bonds going on with Domi and we've got Noe and we've got now the hellfire witch and vanitas so we have got this theme of love going on but they're different forms of love. Obviously, in a sense with Domi, she's the only one who feels it right now. So it seems to be a one-way thing with her trying to get Noe to understand and feel the same way. Noe's trying to figure things out. So he is the precious bean right now trying to figure things out. He doesn't quite know what's going on. And that's what I think is really nice. It's an anime which is taking time to develop things 
I think it's nice to have a storytelling anime like this this season. So I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves and hopefully you are looking after yourselves too. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I apologise if these breakdowns aren't exactly the most interesting in the world. Still trying to find my feet and what works and what doesn't. So have a great day guys. Make sure you look after yourselves and I will see you next week for another episode. Bye guys.